Good morning. Welcome. We're glad that you're here, uh, especially for those of us uh, who are here this morning and those who are watching online, maybe turn me down just a little bit. Um, we'd like to, uh, we also thought it would be good to kind of do some name tags um, so that we can all say to the kids, wow, you've grown so much, or look at adults and say, wow, you've aged so much in the past two years. So welcome. Um, and after worship, it's such a beautiful day. Let's just join us outside as we kind of uh, get a chance to see many of you face to face. If you're watching us online, you get a chance to just to say hi and where you've joined us from this morning. So just a few announcements before we get going. I'm gonna invite Amy uh, just to come up. She's got an announcement at the end. And Jeff, when you come in, if you come up for your announcement. Um, so this week, Grow Groups are continuing. This is the last week for Grow Women uh, online and in person. So we're wrapping up this week and we'd love to have you join us. Um, and Grow Men is continuing for a few more weeks, right? Yep. So uh, in person only for Grow Men. And uh, you can speak with Kirk if you're interested in joining that group. Um, check your inbox today for a ministry and financial update on uh, what's been happening at Kesprez over the last uh, number of months and um, how you can continue to participate with us. Uh, Jeff, I'm going to invite you to come up and uh, update us on the cleanup for tomorrow or for next week. Next week. In the meantime, I'll just say that uh, next week I'm going to be um, delivering food boxes again in the community. And I know people have been great to save boxes. I put two kind of sample boxes out in the foyer this morning for sizes because we get everything from teeny to huge. And um, I have to fit them all in the back of my car is one issue. And also, we're only delivering about once a month, so a small box is not really sufficient. So if you want to take a look at the samples that I've put out, and if you have something, if you want to bring them next, uh, next Sunday to worship, that would be great. Um, we don't like to have too many boxes kind of hanging around in the foyer for a long time, but uh, next week would be great if you want to bring those with you. And also in, on uh, the reception desk this morning, if you've uh, helped with angel food um, over the last little bit, there uh, are a couple of dishes there, plus some of you helped way back when, almost two years ago now, with the gathering place. I think you provided squares or casseroles or something. And there are a number of casserole dishes that have been sitting in the kitchen ever since. So if you've been missing one, it might be yours. Um, a couple of them have a name or a letter on it, so take a look on your way out. Good morning. So next Saturday is gonna be sunny and nice. And we're going to do a work day, a spring cleanup here. So if you're uh, interested in coming, you can come. Um, we have in the foyer a marker board out there. If you want a preview of some of the, the projects that we want to do, um, they're somewhat ranked right now in the order that we want to try to get them done. Tuesday, the property team's getting together, so we're going to try to narrow them, narrow them down a little bit more. There's some supplies we have to pick up, but... Um, Feel free to put your name beside it. That's your, your chance to choose what you want to do. Uh, otherwise, if Saturday when you come, uh, any time between 8 and 1 o'clock, um, there'll be a, just a tent outside and we'll help coordinate uh, where you can go. And we'll try to spread everyone out as much as we can to try to get as much uh, little projects done as we can. If you are online and you want a preview of the list, we can send that to you as well. Um, we do have an email address that was up there um, that um, it's propertyteam at kezpress.ca. So if you want to just email that or email Kirk, we will uh, send you the list so you can see what uh, we want to tackle. Uh, what we want to do different this year as well is do a barbecue at 12 o'clock. So if you are coming, you can strategically plan to come at 1130 to get <laughs> to the barbecue. Um, but we'd prefer you to come a little bit earlier and help out a bit. But even if you want to just come and hang out at the tent, we could use a little bit of help just uh, setting that up and serving people and saying hello and, and things like that. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Hopefully see you Saturday. Yeah. Good morning. 
So I just want to remind you that there will be a very important congregational meeting next Sunday following worship. Um, so three um, items that we need to discuss, three important items. One is we hope that there will be an update about the parking lot to share. Um, second, a new trust deed agreement will be discussed and that will be sent out early this week for you to take a look at beforehand. And then third, uh, with the death of the generous benefactor who provided the funding for the teaching outreach pastor position, we will need to have a discussion about the loss of funding and the options before us. So Reverend Jeff Loach will be here to moderate that part of the meeting. So please put that on your calendar, very important congregational meeting that we hope as many of you as possible can attend. Thank you. Let's stand as we worship this morning. Psalmist says, your love reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountains, your justice like the greatest deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How matchless is your unfailing love. Come, let us worship. sound coming on the wind changing hearts and minds healing brokenness I feel a generation breaking through despair I hear a generation full of faith declare and I darkness we will rise and see is faithful he is glorious and he is Jesus and all my hope is in him he is freedom he is healing right now a light like the break of dawn giving blind men sight letting lame men walk I see a generation resurrection life we are a generation filled with the power of Christ and our song it will be out of the darkness we will rise and see he is faithful he is glorious and he is jesus all my hope is highest price. He has proven his great love for us. We will praise him with our lives and proclaim our love for him. He 
has paid the highest price. He has proven his great love for us. We will praise him with the lives and proclaim our love for to meet with you, but you have been waiting for us all week, waiting for us to enter through these doors and to encounter you, the living God. It's not simply a building. It's not simply a, the gathering of a church, but it is a place where we encounter you in new and fresh ways. So God, may we encounter you in the face of another, in that still small voice that speaks to us, even in the in the breath we breathe. Encounter us this day through the songs that we sing, through the words that we hear, and through the prayer that you have taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, we've been doing a kid song. We haven't done it in a few weeks. Um, but for those of us who are joining us maybe online or, and haven't been with us before or um, forget, we're, we've been trying to learn all the books of the Bible. And if you took a one as a kid, you're, these memories will rush back to you. So we're going to try the kid's song this morning before we do our kid's story. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Philippians, Colossians, first and second Thessalonians, first and second Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, first and second Peter, first John, second John, third John, Jude and Revelation. So if I was to ask the kids who you believe in, um, maybe the answer is easy today because you say, I believe in my mom. I believe that mom's going to take care of me or feed me or do the things. Or there's other times that maybe we say we believe in our teachers or we believe in police officers or doctors or nurses. Now, I, I, I know what you're thinking um, you're going to say, well, Jesus, right? Because that's always the answer to the children's story. And it is. I say it's important to believe in Jesus. But I thought about it. Who does, who does Jesus believe in? Who does Jesus believe in? Yep. Jesus believes in us. Right? Jesus believes in you. Did you ever think about that? That he believes in you. He, uh, he believes so much in you that he was willing to take a chance on us, to die for us, knowing how we live and knowing what we do and the bad decisions that he believes in us enough to demonstrate his love for us, to die for us, so that we can believe in him. Isn't that cool? Let's pray before the kids go off to grow kids and have a blast. And even more, we'll pray for the teachers that will take care of these ragamuffins. And uh, let's pray before you guys go off to grow. We say, thank you, God, that you love us, that, God, you are faithful. Help us to be faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Um, are you doing? Verity's going to do the responsive reading. You can follow along the screen or you can turn to your Bibles to the book of Habakkuk. She's going to be doing most of Habakkuk 3 and then keep your finger in Habakkuk because I'll be preaching and reading from Habakkuk as well. Morning. Today's responsive reading is Habakkuk 3, 2 to 19. O Lord, I have heard of your renown. I stand in awe, O Lord, of your work. In our own time, revive it. In our own time, make it known. In wrath, may you remember mercy. The brightness was like the sun. Rays came forth from his hand, where his power lay hidden. He stopped and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The eternal mountains were shattered. Along his ancient pathways where everlasting hills sank low. Was your wrath against the rivers, O Lord, or your anger against the rivers, or your rage against the sea, when you drove your horses, your chariots, to victory? Brandished your naked bow, seated were the arrows of the army. You split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and writhed. A torrent of water swept by. The deep gave forth its voice. The sun raised high its hands. In fury you trod the earth, in anger you trampled nations. You came forth to save your people, to save your anointed. You crushed the hand of the wicked one, laying it bare from the foundation to root. You pierced with their own arrows the head of his warriors, who came like a whirlwind to scatter us, gloating as if ready to devour the poor who were hiding. I hear and I tremble within. My lips quiver at the sound. Rottenness enters, enters into my bones and my steps tremble beneath me. I wait quietly for the day of calamity to come upon the people who attack us. Though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails and the yield be no fruit, though the rock is dry and cold, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exult in the God of my salvation. The word of the Lord. I'm going to be reading from the book of Habakkuk. I'm going to invite you to uh, follow along if you have your Bible. I'm going to be reading from Habakkuk chapter 1 from verses 1 through 11. This is God's word for us this morning. How long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. Or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abound. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never fails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if I were to tell you. I am raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwelling places not their own. They are feared and a dreaded people. They are a law to themselves and promote their own honor, their horses, 
are swifter than leopards, fiercer than wolves at dusk. Their cavalry gallops headlong. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like a vulture, swooping to devour. They all come bent on violence. Their hordes advance like a desert wind and gather prisoners like like sand. They deride kings and scoff at rulers. They laugh at all the fortified cities. They build eastern ramps and capture them. Then they sweep past like the wind and go on, guilty men whose own strength is their God. May God add his blessing and his understanding to his word. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Here we go again. Another prophet. Israel is once again unfaithful. And a nation outside of Israel attacks Israel and will take away their freedom and their rights and their liberty. But, but unlike the other prophets, Israel isn't accused by Habakkuk, and, and he doesn't even condemn Babylon. Instead, the book of Habakkuk is a prophet addressing God with his own internal faith struggles. It's like we are reading someone else's diary. Even worse, reading the most intimate parts of their diary. The genre of the book of Habakkuk is lament, which is more familiar, as you and I know, to the Psalms than it is to any of the books of the prophets. But yet, here it is, a lament that begins in verse 2, How long, O Lord? How long, O Lord? How long must this continue on? How long do I have to endure this? And then another question related to the first. If you, O God, are good, why is there evil in the world? Which resonates with us and those outside the church. Chances are you've asked that very question late at night with a pink slip in your hand or divorce papers on the kitchen table, or the mailbox full of bills you cannot pay, or your teenager not coming home again for another night. Such questions are why some abandon the little faith they have or turn to their new religion, atheism. Harold Kushner could relate. And why he wrote his bestseller, why bad things happen to good people. It was Kushner's way, I think, of trying to figure out how to hold on to some kind of faith when life is hard. The book of Habakkuk was written six centuries before Jesus by a prophet writing just decades before the collapse of the southern nation of Judah to the Babylonians. And he doesn't sugarcoat the godlessness, that is, the absence of God that he feels in the unfairness of life he is experiencing. This idea becomes the foundation of Habakkuk, and that the reason that Habakkuk 1 and 2 is often, if you read it, you'll see two arguments or two concerns of Habakkuk and then two responses by God. A complaint by Habakkuk and a response by God. A complaint by Habakkuk and a response by God. The first complaint that I read to you is that life is just plain terrible most of the time. Life is just terrible most of the time. Now, terrible in... 6th century B.C. Israel could be very different, we think, from our own age. 
for Habakkuk, people had been ignoring God's word, and therefore they were committing acts of injustice and violence against the most vulnerable, and the leadership, well, the leadership doesn't care, and the leadership does nothing, and God, even worse, God appears to do nothing. Then again, maybe history does repeat itself. But God does not remain silent, but responds to the complainant saying, he is doing something, and it's going to happen through Babylon. But Habakkuk has a great problem with God's answer, saying again, but Babylon is worse than Israel. They are even more corrupt, even more violent, In fact, they gather people together like fish in a net. So how can you, a holy God, use such an unholy people to bring about your justice? To answer, God asks Habakkuk to chisel on a stone tablet and tells him, describe what he sees. And how he learns that the righteous must live by faith. It's a theme that is repeated by the Apostle Paul. And then not to be outdone, Habakkuk continues with five woes or five life experiences that could be the last straw that could cause anyone to abandon their faith completely. But not Habakkuk. Because Habakkuk doesn't end his book at chapter 2, but continues to the final act, which could just provide him with the answer he has been desperately searching for. So Habakkuk does what some of us do when we are overwhelmed and we feel that we that we cannot go on. He prays. But he doesn't just pray. He shares a poem of a sort that sounds strikingly similar to the prayers of Micah and Nahum. Asking God just to show up. God, just show up. Show up now. I need you. Show up like you did to the people of the Exodus when you came to save your people and your anointed one. And all of a sudden, we get a glimpse of Jesus in the book of Habakkuk. If ever there was a time for God to show up, it was now. You see, the talk of fig trees not budding, no grapes or vines or olives in the field, no sheep in the pen or cattle in the stall are simply signals, not signals for a bad day, not even a bad year, but impending disaster, devastation, and death, and all seems hopeless. And we resonate, and we resonate with his words. If anyone at all knows how we could be feeling at this moment, how long we have hidden our desperation, how our phone faith is just hanging on by a thread, maybe not even, not even there. We show ourselves to be full of faith, but we are empty or running on reserve. We appear to have it all together, but in truth, We are overwhelmed. How could anyone possibly relate to the faith struggles we are going through? Who could relate to the absence of God that we feel in our nation, on our streets, in our neighborhoods, even in our own lives and the lives of our churches? And then, and then we are reminded of the one who was innocent and yet arrested. One who did nothing wrong yet experienced the worst life could offer. He stood before those who judged him and yet he stood alone. His best friends deserted him, his closest friends abandoned him, and still he remained silent and did not even argue his case. He was mocked and beaten. He endured unbearable pain and hung on a tree. Unlike you and I, God even turned his back on his own son 
during the deepest and darkest part of his soul when Jesus says, why, my God, have you forsaken me? He asked if all this could be avoided, but still he was willing to suffer for God's sake and for our sake. He did not give up. He did not lose heart. He did not ask for another to take his place. Through it all, he held on to faith. As you know, we spend a lot of time, maybe too much time, speaking about faith in the church. But most of the time, if not all the time, we speak about your faith, where your faith must be directed, how your faith must grow, why faith is so needed, how the righteous live by faith. But we rarely speak about the faith of Jesus. It sounds strange, I know. To speak about Jesus' faith, it's like some kind of modern self-help guru saying, believe in yourself. But in truth, Jesus displayed great faith during those last hours of his life, while at the same time becoming a model of faith for us. Not just that the righteous will live by faith, but how the righteous one was faithful. So maybe it's here we can catch a glimpse of the kind of faith we need to have the kind of faith we need to experience. But what is faith? I know it sounds like kind of an odd question, which may go directly to the familiar answer many of us give when someone asks us, what is faith? And we say, well, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Others like Elizabeth Ochtemeyer say that maybe to others faith consists of believing in certain doctrines or confessing that Jesus is the son of the living God. Does it mean trusting in all circumstances or practically obeying his will? Certainly faith can include all of those things. But here in Habakkuk, as in other parts of the Bible, Habakkuk reminds us that to have faith means to believe in God's promises and act as if they are going to be fulfilled. That's really faith. To believe in God's promises and to act as if they are going to be fulfilled. Which in many ways is Hebrews' definition of faith. To believe God's promises and act as if it's going to be fulfilled. Octomeyer continues, for example, in Genesis 15, 6, the aged Abraham believes that a son will be born to him and that he will have many descendants, even at the age of 100. And the author says, it was reckoned to him as righteousness. So to hear in Habakkuk, to have faith means that God will indeed the, to fulfill the vision and bring his kingdom on earth, and we are called to act as if it has already happened. The book of Habakkuk offers us a picture of a prideful people being humbled, while at the same time, the righteous living by faith. It reminds us that while God may seem silent and uninvolved in our world, he always has a plan to deal with evil and always works out justice. Always. Always. The example of the prophet Habakkuk, who in many ways is a Christ-like figure and points the book of Habakkuk to Jesus, encourages believers to wait on the Lord, expecting that God will indeed work out all things for his good, The gist then is, whatever happens, good or bad, God does everything for God's own glory. Pushed to this vivid realization, Habakkuk can only respond with radical trust in God's goodness and faithfulness. Even in the midst of suffering, Habakkuk is told to wait 
and to watch. It was true of Christ and what Jesus had to endure, for there is no Easter without Good Friday. But it is also true for the faith that Jesus displayed leading up to Easter, which is a reminder for us all that if the righteous one is faithful, then we, the righteous, can live by faith. We are to trust and treasure the God in this moment, whatever moment it may be, because we understand the bigger story, that whatever we are in the midst of now is not the end of our story, it's not the end of your narrative, but your story continues on because of the promises of God that will come true. It was in this reality that Jesus was enabled to endure what he had to endure for us. Although deep in despair, troubled and overwhelmed in pain beyond what you and I could ever imagine and endure, along with experiencing the absence of God, Jesus knew that his death was not the end of the story either. He died as though the promise of the resurrection had already come true. But then again, this is always how the saints have lived, as did the disciples. Those in the early church, as did the martyrs and the reformers, the modern-day persecuted church, and those of us who even ask, if you, O God, are good, why is there evil in the world? And yet those same saints of the faith, those same disciples, those same early church followers, those same martyrs, reformers, modern day persecuted church and questioners like Habakkuk amidst what they could not see, yet what they could live out had already been fulfilled in the promise of God. And therefore, able to say at the end of the book of Habakkuk, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in my God, my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go to the heights. And let it be so. Amen. As we come to our prayers this morning, <clears throat> we're grateful for the opportunity to share uh, in prayer together and to pray for one another and encourage one another as uh, it tells us in scripture to encourage one another with our prayers and our spiritual songs. And so we wanna do that together this morning. Some of the folks that we've been praying for over the past week include Cease, Victoria, Bob, Roy, Scott, the Jeritzma family, Darla and Brian. And uh, we're thankful to share that with the prayer team and to be able to pray uh, behind the scenes often um, over a number of weeks, sometimes months, uh, keeping people on the prayer list. And so we are, are grateful for their, um, their work behind the scenes. Are there others that we can be in prayer for this morning that you want to include in your prayers? Elisa. She's cancer free. Ah, excellent. Great news. Thank you. Others that we want to include in our prayers this morning? Awesome. Thank you. Mm, okay, thank you. So from Mike and, and Janice. Others? Okay, if you're joining us online and you have a prayer request that you'd like to include, we just ask that you uh, put it in the comments section and then we'll take it up uh, in our prayers and uh, share it with our prayer team as well. Let's come to God and gather our prayers together. This morning is uh, Mother's Day, um, and the marketers would love us to believe that 
Mother's Day is a grand celebration, but Mother's Day is very complicated. And so we're going to um, offer our complicated Mother's Day prayers to God this morning. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we come to you with our prayers, and we pray to you in the name of the Father. And we're thankful for the ways that you gather us in these relationships, and for the ways that you form us, you form us as your own children but you form us in all kinds of nurturing relationships, in family relationships, in relationships with friends and strangers, and in communities. And we thank you for the ways that we come to know you through, through those relationships, the ways that we share you This morning, God, we share our prayers with those who are feeling like Tamar, struggling with infertility or a miscarriage. And we lift up our prayers for those who are like Rachel, counting the women among their friends and family who year by year and month by month get pregnant while they wait. We lift up our prayers for those who are like Naomi and have known the bitter sting of a child's death. We pray for those, if you are like Joseph and Benjamin and your mother has died. For those of you who have relationships with their mothers that are marked by trauma, abuse, or abandonment, or a mother who just couldn't parent you the way that you needed. We lift up our prayers if you have been like Moses' mother and you put up a child for adoption, trusting another family to love your child into adulthood. We lift up our prayers if you've been like Pharaoh's daughter, called to love a child who is not yours by birth, and thus the mother who brought that child into your life, even if it is complicated. We lift up our prayers if you, like many, are watching or have watched your mother age and disappear into the long goodbye of infirmity and dementia. We lift up our prayers. If you are like Mary, you are pregnant for the very first time, and you are waiting breathlessly for the miracle of your first child. We are praying for you if your children have turned away from you painfully closing the door on a relationship, leaving you holding your broken heart in your hands. And like Hagar, you are mothering alone. We lift up our prayers for you if motherhood is your greatest joy and your toughest struggle all rolled into one. And we lift up our prayers if you are watching your child battle substance abuse, a legal situation, a mental health issue, or another situation which you can barely watch unfold. We lift up our prayers for you if you, like so many women before you, do not wish to be a mother, or are not married, or in so many other ways do not fit societal norms. We lift up our prayers for you if you see yourself reflected in all or none of these stories. You are loved, you are seen, 
you are worthy. God, hear our prayers. Amen. Closing worship song is a new song. I'm going to invite you to, uh, to join us as we uh, learn it together. It's called By Faith. And then following the benediction, um, we kind of listen to Catherine play. Um, and uh, and uh, we wanted to bless mothers. And there's a song called The Blessing, and we've done it here at church. And... Um, we wanted to do it for um, mothers or those uh, for your own mother. Um, so following the benediction, you can just sit and listen and you can head out to the song as five or six minutes. But, and uh, if we play it, Facebook will probably or YouTube will probably close us down because there's copyright issues. But it's from YouTube. So um, uh, join us as we... Uh, as we listen together, but let's uh, play, have Catherine play it through first. Let's stand together. like this. By faith we see the hand of God in the light of creation's grand design in the midst of those who prove the faithfulness who walk by faith and not by sight. Verse 2. Faith our fathers roll the earth with the power of the promise in our hearts of a holy city built by God's own hand, a place where peace and justice reign. We will stand as children of the promise. We will fix our eyes on him, our soul's reward, till the race is finished and the work is done. We'll walk by faith and not by sight. By faith the prophets saw a day when the long-for Messiah would appear With the power to break the chains of sin and death And triumphant from the grave By faith the church was called to go In the power of the Spirit to the lost to the deliver captives and the preach good news in every corner of the earth. We will stand as children of the promise. We will fix our eyes on him, our soul's reward, till the race is finished and the work is done we'll walk by faith and not by sight by faith the mountain shall be moved and the power of the gospel shall prevail for we know in christ all things are possible for all who call on We will stand as children of the promise. We will fix our eyes on him, our soul's reward. 
until the race is finished and the work is done. We'll walk by faith and not by sight. We will stand as children of the promise. We will fix our eyes on him, our soul's reward, till the race is finished and the work is done. We'll walk by faith and not by sight. We'll walk by faith and not by sight. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord Lift up his countenance upon us this day and forever grant us his peace. Before you and behind you and beside you 